Hello, hello. I don't, oh, I hear you, but on my. Hi. Where can I configure the speaker here? Did I ask you when you set it up? Uh, I've, I configured the, the Yeti Nano as the mic, the webcam as the the webcam as the but apply, and if I. Hmm, that's weird. Let's just move on this, and I'm gonna just put the sound on my. Can I do that? Yeah. It's going to be, let's do that, and I'm going to go on my hose. Should be fine. Great. We're just waiting on Mark. I think so. My fax is ready. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I totally meant that, definitely. <laughs> I didn't know you were one of the few who ended up with a signed fax machine. How did I miss that? Uh, it's, uh, it was Signal London 2015. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's right. We, we did, we were able to do it in London that year. And I still miss Signal in London. Yeah. <laughs> Although Phil was showing off the uh, CLI stuff yesterday, and Fax still shows up in the list. And I was like, rip. Yeah. <laughs> it was deprecated something like, yeah, uh, yes, today. No, it's July 1st, the deprecation. Oh, so I, I didn't know the timeline oh. even. It, it, it was okay. it, it was deprecated today. Well, just yeah. cut off today. Yeah. <laughs> I need to I need to frame it. Yeah, like a nice case Sh shadow box. Yeah, for the museum. <laughs> I was wondering if I got this somewhere. Where the hell did I put it? Waiting for more. This is just going to turn into a scavenger hunt with Kamal. Hi, Mark. Hey, hey, everyone. Hi. Great to have you all here. We've got um, we're just about to start. We've been we've been talking in another room, and now we're jumping over to this one. So thanks for uh, waiting for us to get started. My name's Mark mm -hmm. Boyd. I'll be your moderator for this session. I use the pronouns he and him, and I've got the Twilio team here with us, Nikki, Megan, and Clement is going to be talking about being an API uh, and a Twilio user from the, from the developer community perspective. Maybe to start, Nikki, can I ask you, so can you, do you want to quickly describe your role, um, which I understand to jump in is, going, is working specifically with startup communities. So interested in hearing about a little bit about how you approach that work. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having us today. Just really excited to be here. Um, I'm Nikki. My pronouns are she and her. Um, I am a startup evangelist at Twilio. Um, and basically, that means I get to help startup founders all day. It's pretty great. Um, and so what we do um, is we have a program, a Twilio Startups program, where we work with early stage founders, which we define as pre-Series A. Um, and basically, we do we do a lot of things, but the three kind of main things that we do 
Um, it's through our program, we provide resources to founders um, in the form of product credits for both Twilio and SendGrid. Um, and so we understand, you know, our, our group of founders is resource constrained, time constrained. And so we have credits to help startups uh, get started with Twilio. Um, the other thing that we really do, uh, which is one of my favorite things, is we act as a liaison for startup founders to other people within the Twilio community. And so we have our own startup community, of course, but we also have some other amazing communities that we'll be talking about more today. Um, and what I think is really fun is to connect startup founders to the different kind of channels within Twilio. So whether that's our developer voices program, um, where people can write for our blog, Twilio Champions, which Megan heads up and we'll talk about more in a bit, um, Insiders, or even Twilio.org, our social impact arm. Um, I really like being able to create kind of those connections for our community members. Um, another big thing that we do is partnerships. Um, and I'm happy to talk a bit more about this too, because it's really important for building our community. Um, Twilio kind of has this, uh, you know, a uh, motto, which is, you know, meet developers where they are. Um, and we do a similar thing for startups. And so we meet them where they are, which is oftentimes accelerators, incubators, working with investors, uh, co-working spaces and things like that. And so we work with our partners uh, to create content and events that are relevant for our community, things like workshops, webinars. Um, we've tried everything from yoga to magic. Um, so always looking for creative ways to engage with the community. Um, and then the third thing, and also probably my favorite thing that is totally not scalable, but I think really important to community building um, is office hours. And so I meet one-on-one -on -one with startup founders. I don't think I mentioned it before, former startup founder myself. So I love just you know hearing about what they're building, seeing how we can help, um, and basically you know doing whatever we can to support uh, the companies as they grow. So that's a bit about uh, me and Twilio Startups. Oh, that's fantastic. I mean, there's so much in there. There's that. I love the whole meet developers where they are. I love the fact that you're thinking about what can. It's not just about like getting them to use your products, is it? It's more. It's also about understanding where they are in their growth um, in startup. You know, their startup journey and trying to boost that by giving them opportunities to connect with partnerships to market themselves through Twilio um, voices, I think you were saying, you know, there's a whole range of um, lessons there that's, uh, it, it's it's not just like, it's not marketing where you're just pushing to developers, yeah. you're getting to know, I love it. And also I think with developer engagement, not everything's going to be scalable because right. you're talking with real businesses and each business deserves their own time and opportunity to be heard and um, starting uh, participating. I love the office hours idea. <laughs> Megan, you work more generally with um, uh, the developer communities across um, uh, across Twilio, some of the areas that Nikki's just mentioned. Do you want to describe what you uh, what your work entails? Yeah, definitely. I manage community programs and platforms specifically um, our Champions program, which Clement is a part of, and um, the a new forums initiative. And, uh, you know, Ch Champions is our MVP style program focused on acknowledging and empowering those individuals in our community who inspire and equip other developers to build with Twilio. And, you know, some of the reasons why this is super important to us in include helping people build and leverage network effects with each other and within the company um, and just building goodwill within the community in general. Um, that one's so, so important to me uh, coming from a non-traditional background in tech and having gone to a boot camp myself. I like to, I think a lot of uh, developers these days consider themselves self-taught, but really like we're all community taught. We, we rely on and use so much content and things that people are sharing. Um, and so we, we get better and grow uh, as we do things within communities, so. Fantastic, you mentioned uh, Twilio Champions, um, and then there was another new pro, oh, the forums that you've uh, started up. Why was, I mean, Twilio, you would think it's a well-oiled machine with the uh, developer engagement. It's, you know, one of the global uh, best practices as far as how to engage with communities. Why are you doing new stuff? Or, you know, what's the motivation with that keeping changing and not just doing the same 
stuff you know works. Absolutely, yeah. I think we always will do the same stuff that we know works. Um, but a big part of doing forums, um, perhaps a little bit of it, is that every thing is the digital transformation around our businesses because of COVID. But truly, um, you know, typically we we think of answering questions and helping community in places and spaces like Stack Overflow and other developer social areas where people are already doing this kind of activity, kind of like Nikki was saying, we help developers where they are. And, and we'll never stop doing that, but we can truly own and build a better experience when, um, when it's a platform that we can control. And uh, that's where I'm particularly interested in going in the future is providing and building, creating that best in class experience for developer communities. That hub and spoke model. So you can be out there in the spokes and where developers are, but you also want to have like a, uh, a safe space, an area where community can gather uh, for, for, uh, for Twilio's community as well. Absolutely. And it's, it's not either or, right? It's both and, right. and we're, I understand not a lot of, not every company is in the position to, to do that um, from the, from the start, but as you grow, um, it's a good way to we'll, think about it. That's a great. That's a great point. We'll come back to that one as far as maybe what, if your budgets are limited, what to start on. But first of all, I want to get to Clement and you as congratulations on being one of um, Twilio champion of uh, one mm -hmm. of the initial, uh, generation of Twilio champions. As an API user and as a Twilio user, what's how how are you engaging with the developer community and what are you getting out of that? So thank you. Thank you for having me. And Mark, let me first tell you that I absolutely love your haircut. Uh, well, that's, that's saying uh, I've been using Twilio since quite a while now. I started using, uh, using uh, my first API call was in 2012, if I'm right, or 2011, maybe. And the thing is that now we got a huge uh, Slack community, which is super helpful when we launched as an entrepreneur, when we launched products, when we can just put, put a link, uh, uh, when we launch on product and to get upvotes, uh, we can have feedback on early stage product. And this is pretty great. At the very beginning, it was something like 40 or something. I remember the time when Megan came to me. It was on the, it was on the, um, uh, it was it was the the hall in San Francisco, and you were hard at the time. And you said, "Do you want to be a champion?" And I was pretty sure that neither you or I didn't know precisely what it could be. And now we are something like 200, 300 on the community, and we have a lot of feedback, and that's pretty great. Fantastic. And then you're, so you're talking about how it's actually benefiting your business. I love those. It's the simple ways, you know, like often when we're releasing product, we do need to have um, that push um, of a lot of upvotes on things like product hunt. It makes a huge difference to brand awareness and getting out there. Um, so having access to and being a known entity that the developer community can trust because you've been involved quite a bit uh, with it. So there's that sort of sort of commercial benefit almost, if you like. Are there other ones that come to mind as far as um, uh, being part of a developer community and how it's helped your business? Well, except, except the, the credits we get as uh, I'm launching primary startups and uh, helping others building startups. So most of the time I benefit from Nikki and, and uh, his and her colleagues uh, from uh, some credits using the credits for SMSs, calls and whatever. So I don't expect some benefits from being into the but it's also super cool to have a contact uh, right inside Twilio to which if we have issues if we have a suggestion for a product basically last year I've launched uh, an app for our customers it was one of the biggest one well, 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 there's only four so that's pretty easy to be one of the one of the biggest uh, phone career in France uh, it was an app about soccer games and uh, there was no other options for me to use uh, Twilio for notifications. So I wanted, I absolutely wanted to use Twilio for notification because we use Twilio for uh, authentication using uh, Authy and uh, then the verify. So I suggested the product manager to use uh, to use uh, notify for to to handle notifications, and we sent something like, if I'm right, something on 100, 150 million notifications uh, throughout the, throughout the year. 
And it was super helpful because having contacts right inside of Twilio uh, helped for customization, for improving the product, and this benefits to the whole community. That's fantastic. Um, congratulations. The so one of the so one of the issues, Megan, that you were mentioning, and I know Nikki, um, this would be your area as well. Then so for those, so, so let's talk about the startups that are API providers as well, who are coming along to this session because they want to learn Twilio secret sauce with developer experience. They're not going to have Twilio's set of resources to be able to build their own community. How do they make the best value? What, where do they get started with their, with building developer community? Um, how do they balance that issue of what's not scalable and what's scalable? Any tips for some of our? Um, sure, I can start, but I'd love to also hear from Megan as well. I think uh, the key here is experimentation. Um, we are always running experiments and trying new things. Um, and there's never, you know, one thing that works for every community. But um, as I said, I mean, last year we did a magic show. Um, so, you know, just kind of thinking creatively, um, seeing what your community is already interested in doing and then kind of just trying new things and then always asking for feedback to, you know, start measuring the results, I think is really key. Um, and to build community, you definitely, you know, don't need a lot of resources, I would say, especially in the beginning. Um, you know, building those partnerships. If you're a startup, building a partnership with another startup, um, it's a great way to, you know, share audiences and also uh, get support from other startup founders. So I would start there. He took the words right out of my mouth. Experimentation was definitely what I was going to focus on. And, and doing so in a way that feeds back into measures. But I'll, I'll go one step further and say, um, particularly when you're just getting started and you are worried, maybe worrying about scale, like do things that don't scale, right? And and you know your people or or you should. And so if, if you're not taking the time to get to know them and spend time with them and ask them for their feedback and learn about their motivations and, you know, what they need to be successful, um, that's absolutely where I would start. Thing I'm gonna add here is very simple, and I guess you heard that uh, from Jeff yesterday. Is simply this: ask your developer, because they know your they know your product, they they know the community they're involved in. And the thing, especially about Twilio, because I'm playing with a bunch of APIs. Normally, when we play with Twilio on the side, you play with Stripe uh, for uh, payments for pay ending payments. And the two major difference being a user and um, community member or those two is that Twilio is a developer company and Stripe is an API company, which is completely different. Uh, Twilio focus on the, de the relation we have with developers and Stripe focus on their core product and then integrate developers in it. And that's a, that's a key difference, meaning that one is human focused and the other is product focused. Interesting um, uh, delineation there. I hadn't thought of it like that. I mean, it's one thing I've loved about Twilio is that they that you've got a message around um, your success is about the businesses that are built with Twilio APIs. It's about their success. So you you know you, so it goes together. It's that whole um, a rising tide lifts all boats sort of a, a argument, which I love. Uh, and it's, it it's comes through in all of your work. Um, so then with the with the developer experience, what are there any particular issues that newer? So when there's when you if you're getting if you're some developers who are first coming into a developer community who haven't really had much involvement before, so they're signing up to your slack. How do you get them to take that um, uh, dip in the water and like really, you know, put themselves out there as far as maybe introducing themselves in the Slack channel, uh, coming to an event. Are there any tricks of the trade as far as like getting uh, getting them along uh, to that next point once they've, you know that they're interested, but they're still holding back a little bit? Uh, I like to think about this as just having a conversation, right? Like inviting in and giving you know sometimes some helpful tricks or using formats um, in the 
Champion Slack channel, for example, I ask people to tell me their favorite programming language and the last Twilio product that they used or maybe their first or their favorite. Um, kind of like, you know, making, putting fun parameters around some of those things to draw, uh, draw something out of folks uh, and, and help them get started. It's fantastic. John Foster's asked, how large is the, first of all, how large is the Twilio community team? What's the size of your developer audience? And just some things around, let's talk about metrics. I love talking about metrics. What, you know, like how many, what, what do you measure and what's not a vanity metric, but is something that actually, taught, like, do you measure when we talk about the success of those businesses? Do we, do you look at the growth that's been possible after a year of being part of your startup work, Nikki, or, you know, and, and the difference that Twilio makes? So um, again, I'll start, but Megan would love to hear from you as well. So I believe the number now, and Megan, jump in. I think it's nine million developers um, is kind of the the number for Twilio now. So it's a lot. Um, and to kind of give you an idea of our team, um, the Twilio startup team sits within this larger team that Megan's on as well, called the Developer Network. And so that includes startups, it includes um, our developer advocates, our community team, our developer evangelists, our developer educators. And so it's a big, diverse group of people, um, all with the goal of making the experience as good as it can be on Twilio for developers around the world. Um, it's also a really fun team. Um, so I would definitely um, say, you know, it's important to surround yourself with great people. Um, in terms of the metrics for kind of the, the larger team, um, I wouldn't be the person who could answer that question. Um, but I do think for our team, um, we are really focused on uh, bringing in as many startups as we can, um, you know, having a big reach and, and getting them to try Twilio and, you know, see if it's the right thing for them. Um, we are less focused on um, any sort of like revenue or anything like that. That's, you know, not really in our wheelhouse. Um, for us, it's really more about, you know, how many people are we reaching with? Are they engaged? Um, and are they having a good experience? And so that's that's kind of what we look at in the startups community. Uh, to kind of piggyback on that, because uh, the team that Nikki is referring to, the developer network sits within marketing, we do report into some of those more traditional metrics of like signups and um, unique visitors and traffic and things like that to the site. Um, but we, I lost my train of thought there, but yeah, I, because we sit in marketing, like that's where a lot of our metrics live. But I mean, when it comes to, I mean, documentation is an interesting, another cohort of this team. and they're obviously interested in making people the most successful they can be while they're building. And so tracking like, you know, product milestones, um, product measurement milestones is, is certainly um, an area of interest and not vanity, right? Like those are very meaningful, tangible things that people reach when they are doing and building things with your APIs. What about with um, things like the uh, diversity of, in, of industries that are part of like the startup work that you're doing, Nikki, do you track like the which industries you see more representation from and that sort of thing as far as like maybe like, for example, in COVID, were you um, thinking, well, we really should be trying to reach out to the hospitality sector to be able to support them to be offering that um, uh, cash, uh, no contact courier delivery, that sort of thing. How do you make those decisions or what are you looking for there? Sure, that's a great question. Um, and the program itself is industry agnostic. So we have all sorts of startups from all around the world in every industry applying. We definitely keep an eye out for trends like that. Um, I would say even more than industries necessarily, um, we look at product usage too. So for example, uh, video during, you know, when, when COVID uh, had everyone on lockdown, I mean, we're, we're doing video right now. Um, that was something that we saw, you know, like explosive growth with and just an influx of startups being like, how do I get set up with video? I need video rooms. I need to create, you know, a personalized video room for my sales team, or I need to add videos to my app because we can no longer meet in person, um, that kind of stuff. Um, so that's really more of what we're tracking, um, in terms of, you know, uh, targeting certain, um, industries, we're really, uh, you know, working with 
with startups at the early stage. And so anyone that's interested um, in trying Twilio and trying to, you know, make their customer engagement experience as good as it can be, we're, we're excited to work with them. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then Megan, you were saying that there's a whole other team that also does industry outreach and that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I guess you've got a big enough team that you can really think about, think deeply about some of these um, areas. If getting started with developer engagement, is there anything that you would particularly say, just focus on this metric from like sign up to uh, return to the um, uh, to the developer to the documentation or from documentation to the Slack group anything there yeah I would say focus on the fundamentals right like uh, time to hello world with your product and is your documentation good enough to help people get there as quickly as you you might want them to um, but I would love to hear from Clement around this area, perhaps, as well. Can you repeat the question? I was uh, I was a bit lost on the on the on it. On it. Sorry. No, no, you're right. The, but then when you're startups that you're um, participating with, how do you um, how do you sort of measure that they're sort of moving along so along their journey of, of being part? Like, are there any metrics or? in the eye on like so they developer um documentation but slack group someone else do this like like is there a um sort of milestones that you you're sort of thinking about or metric i mean key metrics but like there's that sort of pathway you're thinking through so what 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 i can notice about uh about uh, Twilio is that it's probably, well, at least on the huge batch of APIs I'm using, it's the only one who has a community, except maybe some, uh, but it's completely different, some open source package, which are their own groups uh, to support each other's for uh, maybe, well, I have some my, some of my Slack open here. So I have a group for uh, SQLize and TypeRM, which are, which are database stuff management, which are their own community. But uh, Twilio, it's, as the only group I know for for uh, at this time, I'm also I'm also on on Stripe Slack channel, but it's the corporate one, meaning that it's the one uh, employees using are using, and I'm just a guest on it. So basically, as far as I know, there is no there is no such uh, community developer out there in the world. In the open there, maybe. Yeah, I was, just, that was, I was not expecting that answer, Clement, really, because I, I was thinking of it from the product perspective of, you know, how easy is it to sign up for your service? How easy is it to, you know, build that first thing? Um, but be it sitting in the community, it should be how quickly, how quickly can we get people to introduce themselves and say hello? Um, so anyone else, if you're in the chat room, please. Uh, discussion. We'd love to hear. Uh, some, I hope John that, that answers uh, your uh, your queries there. The so um, what, just tell us a little bit more about the. It sounds to me like even a smaller agency could uh, adopt something similar along those lines for their, for their development community or at least have a go of, like, so of, of lifting up some of the um, uh, stronger community members. How, what, what, what you've got? Uh, I'm sorry, you cut out a whole bunch in there, Mark. Hear you. Uh, Sorry. Um, I'm, I'm hearing one word out of three from you, so. Yeah. No. Um, it looks like we have another question, though. Um, we could jump to that uh, in the chat, which is uh, from John. Do you have any proactive, do you do anything proactive to attract champions, incentivize, and to keep them going? Megan, great question. That's for you. Yeah, thanks, John, for the question. So our uh, kind of big attraction for champions at the moment is um, 
around a, our conference and a free ticket to the conference. The, the first Champions is still a little bit of a baby program. It was um, an experiment in 2019, and we were able to do a one day summit alongside the conference for Champions in person at the time. And that was kind of a solidifying thing. And then it became a, an official program, if you will, in 2020. And we all know what happened to 2020 um, around a time when you think like, I'm going to get to spend so much time with the community and then um, it's not exactly you get to, but not in the way that I think we were would have thought we would uh, around in person and things like that. Um, and so, in terms of keeping people going, um, that the the conference is right now kind of the biggest benefit uh, of the program. But I really aim to. Um, we alluded to this earlier about like making other people successful. Um, I really aim to provide resources across the spectrum, not just Twilio things, um, but that help people level up in their careers. So public speaking is a goal of theirs, um, writing more content. Um, we had a workshop from someone who wrote the book called The Developer's Guide to Technical Content. Uh, I like to kind of offer some of those things as well. Um, and then access to, to our products and product teams. So throughout COVID times, we've been doing virtual product summits um, that help champions get access or earlier information to uh, our product roadmaps and things like that. Uh, Clement, do you have anything to add to that? Why you feel incentivized to be a Twilio champion? Well, one of the things, I, was, I wasn't a Twilio champion at that time when I get it, but I'm super proud of this amazing thing. It's a Twilio fax machine signed by Jeff Lawson. Uh, it's something like kind of old today, and it's. I'm terribly sad about it because uh, for you, for those of you who don't know it, uh, Twilio just uh, deprecated their fax API uh, right just today. In fact, uh, there was an announcement six months ago, but uh, the fax API is now dead. So I'm very sad about it. So I need to frame this fax machine. And obviously, uh, I'm th I'm just thirty. I'm just on thirty. And except for Twilio, I've never used a fax in my whole life. Rip, rip to fax. But yeah, so for now, the for now the for now the champion is a great community, and uh, I think also that uh, Megan, correct me if I'm wrong, but we can uh, propose uh, champions to the community because it's also by proposing pairs uh, that. Well, the community also grows by including people and being inclusive. So it's always a good thing to include people on this batch of champions. Yeah, something that we haven't spent as much time doing largely because the whole like pivot to virtual everything came at the same time that the, the program was growing and becoming a real thing. Um, are some of those activities of just like helping people get to know each other better and providing um, those spaces and opportunities. And so there's, um, you know, like Nikki on the startup side and team have tried things like yoga and magic. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to do more fun. It's just like balancing um, time zones and, you know, uh, the Zoom fatigue for a lot of people and uh, that kind of stuff. It's uh, a little tricky, but. And one and one of the last thing, uh, because we are, I think we're gonna running out of time, is that to tell you how Twilio changed my life, because it's really true. I mean, uh, is the fact that I met during during my uh, role at Twilio pathway using their APIs, I met a bunch of people from employees to users, and a lot of them become friend be, became friends. Uh, the very the very first, I'm gonna give three examples. The very first it was a product manager. His name is Devang. He was on the Flex team and now is out of Twilio, but we are still in contact. He had a baby. Uh, we exchanged video. He came to France and his wife comes, to, comes from Lille, where I live. So uh, we met here in Lille uh, something like uh, two years ago when the COVID wasn't um, not here yet. Uh, there are also people in, uh, in the Dev Evangelism team I really love, like Valerian, who's in France. And I know, I know her before she was joining Twilio because she was she was uh, working in a company I invested in. And there's also other example like Jen, who was at Twilio, who moved, who's coming to France, and we're going to do uh, a wine tour here in September. It's going to be great. Well, there's plenty of example. And also, uh, Twilio opened an office in France something like two years ago now. And uh, I, 
I created links with the team, uh, like I, we said before uh, jumping into this room. And nowadays, I'm just going. I'm going to concert with the country director of Twilio with his son, and I met in the bar with with his family. So it's absolutely well. Twilio more than more than just an employee, and the I would say all the galaxy beyond it is a super great uh, is a super great company, and I really love working with that product. I love that. I think you've been to more Twilio offices than I have, Clement, for sure. Definitely more than me. <laughs> Okay, I think. Thanks so much, Mark. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Really appreciate the time. Um, and if you have any other questions or if you need anything, um, I think there's a way to reach out to us. Um, just nruben at twilio.com. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.